For this video, we're going to be looking at two things. The first is setting a frame of reference with our free body diagrams, and the second thing is friction. We're going to start by using this Atwood machine, uh, which will help us with the two masses connected by a cable over a pulley. And so for this one, we have our M1, mass 1, with 1150 kilograms, 1150 kilograms. We also have our M2, which is 1000.0 kilograms. We want to find the tension in the cable and the acceleration of the masses. So at first this looks really complicated and for this once you set up your free body diagrams and your summation equations the math itself is just algebra and you have to just work that out and it's actually not too bad but setting it up is where you have to be very careful especially with your frames of references and what your, is your positive direction. So let's take a look at this. We have our M1 and we have our M2. Our M1 is 1,150 kilograms, and our M2 is 1,000 kilograms. What we are looking for is the tension in the cable, and because this is a cable, and we have these two masses that are connected to, to this cable, we know that the tension must be the same throughout the entire cable. So the T over here is going to be the T over here. And so when we start filling out our free body diagrams and we start putting our vectors on here, we always start with our weight. So we can put the weight on both. And then we can put the other force, which is the tension force, which will be on both. And so these free body diagrams are actually very simple. There are only two forces acting on both of them. And let's go and start filling in our vectors. So this one is going to be the weight which is going to be equal to the mass times gravity, which for this one, M1 is 1,150, so we have 1,150 times 9.8, and this is equal to 11,270 newtons. And this is just our T for now. We don't know what it is. For our M2, we know the same thing, so we have our weight as 1,000, times 9.8 and that is equal to 9,800 newtons and we again have our t going up. Now for this one before we begin with our summation equations we need to set a positive direction. For this one it actually doesn't matter which direction you set as positive but it's easier if you can make a guess as to what the direction you think it's going to move. So in this case, if we have our M1 as 1,150 kilograms and our M2 as 1,000 kilograms, that gives us a pretty good idea that the 1,150 kilograms is going to drop, it's going to go down, which means that our M2 is going to go up. For me, it's easiest to set the motion of direction or the motion of acceleration as the positive direction, which means for our M1, down is going to be positive. Therefore, for our M2, up is going to be our positive direction. So I'll say that again. You set the direction of acceleration as your positive direction. So even though we have two objects, they're going to be moving in opposite directions, one down, our M1 is going to be going down, our M2 is going to be going up. Because they are connected, we can set a frame of reference of down as positive for our M1 and up as positive for our M2. In fact, for this math to work out properly, we need to be consistent in that for the direction of acceleration. All right, so now that we have that, and actually, let's go ahead and label that onto our free body diagrams. We can say that up is our positive direction. Ooh, and I need to move this over to here for M2. And for our M1, down is our positive direction. And so when we start making our summation equations, and let me go ahead and minimize this a little bit. All right, so summation equations. So the sum of the forces on one is going to be equal to, I usually start with my positive vectors first, so I do 11,270 minus T, it's going in the opposite direction, is equal to the mass times acceleration, so the net force is equal to MA, the mass is 
1150A. And that's our first equation to begin with for this one. And so I'm going to move this over a little bit. I'm going to simplify this a little bit. I'm going to set it equal to t. And so we can say 11,270 minus t is equal to 1,150a. Move the 11,270 to the other side. So we subtract it. So we have negative t is left on the side is equal to 1,150a minus 11,270. And let's go ahead and make this a, a positive t. So we multiply everything by negative 1. So this becomes t is equal to negative 1,150a plus 11,270. And that'll be one of our first equations for this particular problem. Now for M2, we want to do another summation equation. So we do the sum. And actually, let me use a different color. So. The sum of the forces on the second object is equal to, and if we start with our positives in this case, this will be our t minus 9,800. And that's going to be equal to this mass times its acceleration, which is going to be 1,000 is its mass times a. And the acceleration is going to be the same for both because they're connected to the same cable. And you can think back to Newton's third law for this. We're going to do the same thing that we did for the last equation. So we're going to simplify to t minus 9800 is equal to 1000a. And then move the 9800 to, both, to the other side. So we add 9800. t is equal to 1000a plus 9800. And so now we have our two equations that we want to start with. What we want to do now is combine them together. The way we can do that is we have a t on both that we've set it equal to. And so we can set these two equations equal to each other. And let me use a different color to show you that. So we have this negative 1150a plus 11,270 is going to be equal to 1000a plus 9,800 because these are both equal to t. And so this becomes negative 1150a plus 11270 is equal to 1000a plus 9800. What we've done here is we have substituted t to get rid of t so that we can have just one variable a to solve for with our equation. Now we want to combine our a's together on one side and our just numbers together on the other side. And so this becomes, if we move the a's to the right side, this becomes 2150a. And that's going to be equal to, when we subtract 9800 from the other side, this becomes 1470. And then when we divide both sides by 2150, this becomes a is equal to 0.6 eight four meters per second squared and that is one of our answers that's our acceleration now to find our t the tension all we have to do is plug this a value in to one of our equations in fact if you want to check your work to make sure you're correct you can plug it into both equations for t and you should get the same exact answer I'm going to plug it into this one over here on the left. And so, let me choose a different color. If we have t is equal to negative 1150 times a, which is 0.684, plus 11270, when you work this out, you should get t is equal to 10,500 newtons. And again, if you want to check your work, you can plug it into the other equation, and you should get the exact same answer. This is the Atwood machine. And again, this is to emphasize how to set your frame of reference, your positive direction, with two different masses that are connected. 
Now, friction. Friction force is a reactive force caused by the interactions of two surfaces. It will always oppose the direction of the movement or the direction of the applied force. Friction is dependent on a coefficient mu and the normal force. And remember, the normal force is the reactive force of the surface. We can think of it as the force of friction is less than or equal to mu times Fn. For our equations that we use, we typically will say our force of friction is equal to mu times Fn. We're going to be using the maximum. There are two types of friction. We have static and kinetic. Static is for when the object is not moving, and kinetic is for when the object is moving. For us, in the real world, static will always be higher than kinetic. And what I want you to be thinking about for our discussion is, what does this say about the amount of effort required to get an object moving versus keeping an object moving? And we'll talk about that in our discussion. For a quick practice problem, a 69.0 kilogram crate rests on a level 4 at a shipping dock. The coefficients of static friction and kinetic friction are 0 0.740 and 0 0.450 respectively. A, what horizontal pushing force is required to just start the crate moving? And then B, what horizontal pushing force is required to slide the crate across the dock at a constant speed? So, to get started on this, we want to draw our free body diagram. And so, I always start with my weight first, and that's going to be going straight down. And since this crate is on the floor, that means we're also going to have a normal force, the reactive force of the floor. And actually, let me go and start labeling these. And so this is going to be our weight, our mass times gravity. This will be 69 times 9.8, which is 676.2 newtons. This will be our force normal, which since our object is on the floor, it's in vertical equilibrium, which means that our force normal is going to be equal to 676.2 newtons as well. The other forces that we want to add now, we're going to have a force applied, and my default, if it's not given, is to the right, so that my force applied will be positive. And so this will be my force applied, my FA. And then the last force that we want to add now is the new one, is friction, and it opposes the applied force or the direction of movement. And so this will now be going to the left. This will be my force of friction. Now, since we've already started filling in some of our value, values here, we can go back to the equation for the friction force. And for this one, we are looking for the horizontal pushing force that is required to just start the crate moving. The way we should interpret that is when our friction force is equal to our force applied. That is when our object will just start moving. And the equation we have for our friction force is equal to mu times Fn. And so that is going to be equal to our force applied. So when we solve for our mu Fn, that will be our force applied. For the first one, it's not moving yet, which means we need to use our coefficient of static friction, which is 0 0.740. So we do 0 0.740 times our normal force, which is 676.2. And that gives us 500 newtons, which with the correct number of sig figs will be 5.00 E2 newtons. And that's for part A. Now for part B, what horizontal pushing force is required to slide the crate across the dock at a constant speed. What this tells you is that it is now in dynamic equilibrium, which means that it is moving at a constant velocity with zero acceleration. So the net force in the horizontal, in this case, is still zero. But now it, it is moving. And so we want to do the same problem, except using a different coefficient, the coefficient of kinetic friction, which is 0 0.450. So we can use the exact same equation here because the friction force will still be equal to the applied force because of the constant velocity, so zero acceleration. 
And so we can say for kinetic friction now, for the part B, we still have the friction force is equal to mu Fn, which is going to be equal to our force applied. And now for our co co uh, coefficient of kinetic friction, we use 0 0.450. So we use 0 0.450 times our normal force, which is 676.2 newtons. And that's going to be equal to 304 newtons. And there we go. Those are our two answers, 500 or 5 5.00 times 10 to the second newtons for part A, and then 304 newtons for part B. For our discussion, I want you to be thinking more about friction. So there are a couple more questions or a few more questions here about friction. And then I also want to see if you can attempt this problem. This problem is more conceptual. And so give it a try, and we'll get, we're going to work on this in class tomorrow.